Good morning. It's about 10 past 8 on Saturday, uh, March 28th. I am in Stoneham, Massachusetts, and uh, there is an estate sale today that I'm attending uh, at about 10 o'clock. Um, normally, I would have tried to post up some kind of a preview uh, for the estate sale, but honestly, the ad was as thin uh, and devoid of detail as it could possibly be. Literally, it was um, uh, a mention of the address and the date and the time, and that's it. Um, there were quite a few yard sales and estate sales uh, out there today, uh, many of which I could have attended, uh, but the the estate sales that I saw that uh, that had any photos didn't have uh, a lot of uh, uh, I guess a lot of density of items that I was interested in. Um, it's tough to say. I I I have a specific or sort of a general type of of estate sale that I really like to attend. Um, I don't like, uh, I, I, I don't tend to, to do very well at places that are uh, homes of people who have, you know, uh, I guess a lot of polish to them, um, uh, you know, where the home is extremely well kept and neat and, um, and there are very few things that are of uh, high value. Those, those aren't my favorite type of sales to go to. I prefer to attend a house that has been lived in for 30, 40, 50, 60 years uh, by the same family that, you know, has accumulated stuff and used stuff. And, um, you know, maybe they're still using their wedding china that they got 35 years ago or, or, or you know, that sort of thing. I... I, uh, I, I enjoy being able to pour through an attic or a basement and finding hidden treasures, things that I know about that, that, that the people who had them didn't realize had suddenly acquired interest in the collector market. So, um, so I picked this estate sale because I didn't see anything else out there like it. Uh, I just went and put my name on the list, uh, which is uh, the estate sale starts at 10 o'clock, and um, and like I said, it's it's just after eight now, so I, I'm here two hours ahead of time uh, for no other reason than to put my name on the list, and I was still only the fourth person who showed up. Uh, if you want to be the first person at an estate sale, you kind of need to get there three hours ahead of time at least. Um, I have, I have gotten to estate sales at, at four o'clock in the morning sometimes, and, and barely made it there before anybody else. So, uh, so I got here. I put my name on the list. I got a quick peek inside, and it looks like the type of place that I really enjoy going to. Uh, the family is there. They're setting up the estate sale themselves, and um, and it looks like. Probably their parents were, uh, you know, had lived there for, for quite a while. Um, the, uh, <coughs> the woman that I spoke to briefly, uh, she seemed to probably be at least in her late 40s. So I would say that puts her parents probably in their 70s at least. And if they've lived here for, you know, most of their married life, well, then, you know, that... that that, that exactly is the type of, of sale that I like to go to. So, I am uh, I'm eagerly anticipating this sale, and uh, we'll see what I find. Uh, I've got about $350 to spend, and, uh, and uh, I, I should be able to get in there right at 10 o'clock. Uh, so, uh, wish me luck, and uh, let's see what I find. Okay, it's 10.35, and I just finished up 
at the estate sale in Stoneham. Um, I was number four on the list, so I was able to get in with the first wave, and because of that, I did manage to get some goodies. Um, I got a, uh, a Tyco Night Glow um, slot car racing set. I don't know how complete it was because the box was, was bound together with string. I only paid $5 for it, so I'm not too worried about the risk there. Uh, I also got some old uh, vintage uh, girls sewing patterns, um, and I have had good luck with vintage sewing patterns in the past. I got a large box of them. There's probably at least 20, maybe 30 or more um, in there, and I paid five dollars for the box. So um, I, I know in the past I've I've sold um, sewing pa vintage sewing patterns in bulk. I'll, I'll just group them all together and uh, and they averaged about three or four dollars per pattern so I'm I'm pretty certain that's also a good buy. Um, uh, I bought an oil painting uh, probably late 19th early 20th century. It was an oil painting on uh, Academy board. It has some damage to it. I only paid five dollars for that so I'm not too worried about the risk there. Um, I, I didn't catch a signature on it, but, uh, you know, I'm going to try to do a little research. I will probably consign that through a standard auction. I'm not sure, um, but I'll, I'll take a look and see how such things are doing on eBay. Uh, those tend to, tend to do a little better. I may even find a, find a dealer to sell that to directly. Um, and then the last thing that I got, I paid $10 for a pair of Speaker Lab speakers. Uh, these are, are vintage... Uh, audio speakers that um, uh, uh, they were around in the 80s. People are really into collecting vintage electronics right now, um, especially the audio electronics. And um, I paid ten dollars for the pair of those. They're pretty big uh, speaker cabinets. Uh, you know, I need to to test them out when I get home and see how they are. But things were relatively well taken care of in the house. Uh, my overall impression of the estate sale was just what I thought. Um, you know, it was a house that was lived in. Uh, the, uh, the stereo that was attached to these speakers was an eight-track player. Um, there, were, uh, there were lots and lots of, of different bric-a-brac and, and tchotchkes, uh, none of which really appealed to me a whole heck of a lot. Um, I got into a little bit of a verbal skirmish inside um, uh, over who had the rights to a set of Pyrex mixing bowls. I let her have them. It wasn't a great big deal to me. Um, but overall, I spent uh, I spent $25, and uh, I think I stand to uh, return pretty well on that investment. Uh, we'll have a look at those items later. Thanks. It's Saturday morning at about 11.30 now, and I just got home and unloaded the, uh, unloaded the car. And let's have a quick look at the few things that I got at the estate sale. Now, the first thing that I got was this interesting oil painting. Uh, I spent a couple minutes looking at it, and I did find a signature in the lower right-hand corner. And it's doubtful that you'll be able to read that, but it says E.E. E. Haskins. I haven't really been able to find out anything about uh, Mr. or Ms. Haskins, but... Uh, you can see it, it appears to be a uh, very cloudy scene. I'm assuming that's a nighttime scene um, at the ocean. Um, and I haven't quite figured out what I think they're doing there. But you can see the $5 price tag on that. Uh, scrolling further down here, uh, we've got quite a few dress patterns here. And it seems like there's kind of a mix of 70s and 80s. Um, and, and maybe quite a few youth sizes um, and young lady sizes. Uh, you can see there's some, some interesting looking stuff. There's also a few doll patterns here, such as that there. Um, uh, more doll patterns there. And like that. And then this box is also filled with additional dress patterns. So we'll have a look and see what we've got. Usually what I do when I sell these is I will take and photograph each 
each pattern, but um, but disclaim in the ad that I don't know if all the bits and pieces are there, and people are are buying them, you know, as as they see them, and I assume that some most of the stuff is complete and some of the things are incomplete. Uh, let's take a look here. Let me clean this off really quick. The next thing that I got was this Tyco Night Glow set. Um, uh, sort of a glow-in-the-dark or illuminated slot car racing set. And I just cut the strings off of it, and I haven't opened the box yet, so let's have a look and see if I've actually got the cars in there. I did some quick research and saw that somebody had a set that didn't have any cars that they still managed to get $45 just for the track and the instructions. There's one of the cars. And then let's see, there's supposed to be two cars in here. No, I'm not sure that the second car is there. But that's okay. Every little bit counts. Like I said, somebody got $45 just for the box, which was in similar condition to this, and the track. So I think I'm still going to do fairly well with that. The last thing that I got were these two Speaker Lab uh, cabinet speakers. Uh, you can see um, they're fairly tall. And, uh, you know, the cabinets are not in perfect condition. There are a couple of water rings on there, and looks like something of an ink stain, perhaps. But I only paid $10 for these. And we'll have a look around back. You can see the label there. And there. Uh, Speaker Lab 2. And all the specifications there. Not sure exactly when these date to, at least the 80s, uh, perhaps even the 70s. I took a quick peek earlier, and I think the cones look pretty good in there. Uh, I saw somebody had written on a uh, on a vintage audio forum that uh, all of this glue here. Uh, was fairly typical of how Speaker Lab put together their early speakers, and that uh, it can be a little challenging to deal with when you're trying to do a restoration, but everything looks pretty good. I still have to test them, but I'm pretty happy with what I see so far. Uh, vintage Speaker Lab speakers are selling for anywhere from fifty dollars for a pair up to uh you know several hundred dollars so i think my ten dollar investment is pretty safe and there you go it i spent or there you go i should say i spent twenty five dollars today i think that should be a pretty strong return on investment there